Good morning, YouTube, woodworkers, and everybody who loves me. We are going to take these four posts that I salvaged from a pallet. You can see that pile of crap here. And uh, we are going to start a bed for my daughter using this massive pile of pallet wood I have here behind me. Now, that's pine. These are not pine. I've got these cut at two and a half inches square and we are going to wrap these in those bring these posts around four inches and we're going to try to make a bed that looks like this. Now I made up a drawing. Here's a better picture of that and we are going to take that picture, that pile, these poles and this shitty drawing and try to accomplish something nice. So, follow along, let's see where it goes. First thing I gotta do is get my post cut. These posts are going to be inch and three quarter by two and a half by 46. As I cut all of this pile of wood, I try to run the blade and cut off any of the bad parts which I turned out to be pretty happy because it looks like I cut just about all that crack right off of it. You see it's real bad there in the front but when I flip it over it didn't go all the way through so I was pretty happy with that. I am making a full bed. This is not a queen or a king which is all that is offered on the website so all I have to work with is a picture so the measurements are kind of made up as I go along. So I lay my frame out to make sure that they're going to come out right. By right, I mean it has to match the measurements of my other daughter's bed that I built a few years ago. Because that's what I'm taking these measurements off of as I go along. Now that stop block is set up at the 46 inch mark. Most of these boards are planed down to three quarter inches in thickness. Now, we will be cutting them down to three inches and four inches later on. But for now, we're gonna cut them all at about 46 inches because that'll pretty much cover everything except for the long ones. So, after three days of milling wood, I now have all the parts cut for my headboard and all the parts cut for my footboard. So, I'm gonna call it a wrap for today and uh, we'll get back at it tomorrow. So, all right, lights out. Starting out the next day, I decided I'm going to go ahead and glue up the panels. That way, they can sit in the clamps all day while I work on the framework for this bed. And then, later on that day, I can pull them out and get them all cleaned up. Once I got all the panels in the clamps, I can go ahead and start laying out the frame for my headboard. Now, the outside edges are the four inch, the inside are the three inch, 
and in between those are sandwiched a half inch by a three inch on the outsides and one inch on the inside giving me a full one inch so the panels can rest nicely inside of what might be considered a rail and style frame but because I did not have a rail and style bit big enough I figured this would work just as well and since I didn't have nearly enough clamps to clamp all this together I did buy a couple boxes of two inch screws and these will be on the back side you're not going to see them so I'm not too worried about hiding them but you can see how nicely these fit together So this is a four inch by three quarter by 65 inch board. We have four of these. These are gonna be the outside of the post. And I have to cut out this center section, which is two inches wide. So I'm gonna use a drill and a jigsaw, and then we are going to use a trim router to clean everything up. This is probably not the best use for an $800 miter saw. So if you did not watch my table saw insert video, then you won't know what I'm talking about. But if you did watch it, this is the particular project that gummed up my trim router and I had to take all the bearings off and clean everything up. I did not peel nearly enough of this tape away to keep it from getting in my bearing. So just a little tip, cut your double sided tape back a little bit so you don't have to cut it with your trim router. As you can see, it's starting to make a lot of dust. Do a pretty good first pass, then clear all your dust and do another pass because your bearing will pick up all of the dust. Now, the picture I've got doesn't show anything fancy as far as trim work goes. But I'm going to go ahead and put a pretty good 45 degree chamfer on the inside of these. I think it'll just pretty it up a little bit. So with these being solid wood, we went ahead and got them pre-finished, we'll let them dry and go work on our legs.
So this is where this project started going terribly wrong. That three quarter inch board is sliding right into the slots of my fence. Therefore, I cannot put a 45 on here without putting a sacrificial fence on it. Did I do that? No. We went ahead and we kept running boards. And before the comments start flying, I know this is stupid. Not only is it safety stupid, but it's wood stupid because this is literally tearing out the edge of my miter. The part that's going to be seen is tearing out so bad right now. Next, we are going to glue these boards to the two and a half inch posts that you've seen earlier in the video. Now, the better way to do this would have been to use four inch posts. I don't have any four inch posts, I got a bunch of power wood. So, a two inch post, a three quarter inch board cut at four inches with miters on them. Somehow, I get lucky and that actually makes a four inch post. And it ends up turning out pretty good. But right now I'm pretty upset because it's stupid cut I made on the table saw is really making my freaking joints look bad. So I'll show you about that later. But I'm only putting three sides of this on because we're gonna be putting some nice five and a half inch lag screws in one side going all the way through. And now we gotta drill those holes right there. I'm using an eighth inch drill bit. This drill bit is like 12 inches long. I don't know where I got it or when I got it, but I'm sure glad I had it. I'm also using that 8 inch drill bit to drill all the way through into the other posts. That way I don't split any of this pilot wood.
So as you can see the bolts there on the side, this board covers up those bolts nice and pretty. It's going to suck if I ever have to take them out, but you're not going to see them now. Now this is where I'm fixing up all those ugly joints caused by that crappy cut on the table saw. I just kind of roll them over with a big old extension. Here I'm putting the pocket holes in. This actually holds this inner frame to the outer frame. And I don't know if y'all's pocket hole jig can do this, but that's a 36 inch panel. And I've done the same thing with the headboard panel. So you might want to look into this. So just in case anybody's wondering why I'm doing it this way, well, that crappy cut on that table saw didn't exactly bring my post out square. So I'm just kind of drawing a line around where I need to cut to fit nice and tight. And, well, it come out alright. So for the rails, I went and got some 2x6s from Lowe's, and I used some more of those pallet boards, and I got those set at an inch and a half all the way around. That way I don't mess up. It's the same all over. You put some glue down, screw them in, and they should hold pretty well. There's like two and a half inch screws, so they're not going to. So for this next part, I don't have any of those fancy little wooden knobs that we use. So I went and bought like 48 drawer boards. We drilled a hole, I used a flag so I know how far to take them down. Drilled all my holes, and then we went back and we're just going to hold them in there with tension and some epoxy. Next up is the bed frame hardware. I ordered this bed frame hardware off of Amazon. It was like 18 bucks. I'll leave a link down in the description. It's not real hard to install. Just make sure that when you install it, you use both pieces at the same time to set your distance from the edge. If not, you'll have gaps. So to set these up, I use spacer blocks on both ends that way it would hold it up and I didn't have to have 15 hands to hold everything in place. So, after watching that, you want to check this bed out? We'll do a walk around. What do you think, Rosie? You want to show them on the bed? 
Huh? You want to show him the bed? Let's walk around and show him the bed. So, this is how it turned out. We have our drawer pulls along the top and down the rails on both sides of the rails. I apologize for the lighting. It's not very good here in my daughter's room. Getting closer here. These are some of the corners that I had messed up on on my miters. <clears throat> These also the footboard is thirty six inches from floor to top. The headboard, I believe, is sixty five inches. So as you can see, it is not identical to the picture that I used, but it's fairly close. We even ran that drawer pulls down along the bottom. We got the Texas Star there on the end of the footboard. So, I did not pay $1,100 for this bed frame. I have maybe $450 in the mattress and the hardware. You too could have a bed like this for around $450 if you spend the time to go out and collect the pallet wood. The bird, on the other hand, well, you have to get your own bird. I think it turned out pretty well, and my daughter absolutely loves it. So, you say bye-bye, Rosie? Tell them, bye-bye. All right. Well, that's what I got for y'all today. So, I'm going to slow down. And we're going to see about making some videos. And maybe you'll see Rosie again. But, for right now, we got a nightstand to build a mattress bed. And then we got a dresser to build a mattress bed. We did? Yeah? You going to be around for that? Alright. Well, I will see y'all in the next video. Could be a week, could be a month, but, uh... Ring that bell, hit that subscribe button, that way you can see when they come out. And we'll see if we can get Rosie in some more of these videos for y'all. Alright, bye for now. Kiss me. Try to kiss. Oh, you sweet girl. You ain't mean? Uh -huh. Yes, a pretty girl. Oh, he's a pretty bird. Oh, guess what? Bye, y'all. Yeah.